There is now leaked audio that purports to catch white supremacist Richard Spencer in the middle of a racist tirade, which isn't so surprising. I mean, I would imagine he goes on racist tirades on a regular basis. But the person who leaked the audio was a one time friend, Milo Yiannopoulos. Now, just to give you context into the rant you're about to hear, it was following the hate protest in Charlottesville, Virginia where white supremacists were marching with tiki torches, chanting things like the Jews will not replace us. There were counter protesters there and as we all know, Heather Heyer, one of the counter protesters was run over by a white supremacist and she died as a result. Now after that, understandably, Charlottesville, Virginia would wanna have some restrictions on the types of demonstrations that are allowed. And Richard Spencer was very upset about that. And you're about to hear just how upset in this next clip. I am so mad. I am so mad at these people. They don't do this to me. We're gonna ritualistically humiliate them. I am coming back here every weekend if I have to. Like this is never over. I win. They lose. That's how the world works. Little they get ruled by people like me. Little I my ancestors. Enslave those pieces of We're gonna win. I rule the world. Those pieces of <laughs> get ruled by people like me. They look up and see a face like mine looking down at them. That's how the world works. We are gonna destroy this town. <laughs> there are so many racial slurs that there is like long bouts of silence. <laughs> there are so many. We were learning new racial slurs out there, okay? As a group from this. <laughs> like what? Yeah, we yeah, there were some words in there which I'm not gonna repeat that I had never even heard of. And right? let me tell you this. David Duke did not walk, so you two could run and snitch on each other. Like what is this movement? <laughs> oh my god. You know what I'm saying? What is this movement? Maybe, maybe Milo had an awakening. Like, I mean, first together. of all, after hearing anyone engage in that type of rant, like, would you follow that guy? No. Right? Like, he's having like a full These blown meltdown, wild. which makes it abundantly clear that he is so insecure, yeah. and he. He feels powerless because he is powerless because he's trash and he's angry and lashing out at everyone else. Someone died as a result of your hate protest, right? Your hate march. Yeah. And he's more upset about not being able to carry out these hate marches in the future as opposed to the fact that a, an innocent person who was simply counter protesting was run over and killed. And, and just that murder, it's so awful because not only did someone die, someone was killed, but like someone was so full of hate and rage that they actually drove their car mm -hmm. through a crowd of people. Like yep. that is, you know what I mean? Like that mm -hmm. is, yeah. If this gets confirmed to whoever way they can possibly do that, <clears throat> again, these are guys who wear red hats. This guy supports the president. This is the guy the president then said there's good people on both sides. The president was endorsing people like this. This was from Charlottesville that mm -hmm. Trump said that yep. after Heather Heyer was murdered. So true. when That's when when you get people that gonna confirm this type of folks and then you say, hey, you know, I don't know why every white supremacist happens to be a, a Republican supporter. I, you, you can no longer shake it. So as this comes out, the question then becomes, hey, do you guys support this kind of rhetoric because he supports you? Like you, you can't you can't divorce the two. You guys have already endorsed each other, now you have to answer for it. Or go ahead and denounce and reject, get yourself away from it and tell us how many different ways you don't agree with him. Cuz he kind of halfway said, "Oh yeah, I don't really endorse white supremacists. I just say it in a roundabout way how they're okay because they have a reason to be mad." Who, Trump? Yeah. Yeah. Is no, this the reason to be mad? No, can I just say the people who make excuses cuz Donald Trump said there's very fine people on both sides, on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, no, no, he's not referring to the hate march. He's referring to people who were motivated to participate because they wanted to protect the Confederate statues. Yeah, none of those people are good people, okay? <laughs> if you're one of those individuals who thinks that it makes sense to have Confederate statues on public land, yeah, you're you're part of the problem. I don't consider you good people, okay? Yep. And and he defended them in the context of that hate march. So like, don't play this game of like, no, no, that's not what he meant. That is exactly what he meant. Absolutely. And he has said far worse following that hate march. Yeah, that is exactly what he meant. And that's exactly what many of his actions over the past few decades 
have met. Yeah. Before long before yeah. he was president. Like this is who he is. These are his people. He allowed children, migrant children to die in some cases surrounded by their own vomit mm -hmm. in cages. Okay, he is trash, he is a hateful person, he is a racist himself. So like I don't understand anyone who thinks like, oh no, we're gonna we're gonna defend him. That's not what he meant when he said there are very fine people on both sides. We know exactly what he meant. It's complete and utter nonsense when people try to defend him like that. But more importantly, you're right. I mean, there's a reason why people like Richard Spencer gravitate towards someone like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is very clear in his hatred for the powerless, for the disenfranchised. There's no question. It's a very small thing. So, but with uh, Milo exposing him like this, apparently, I mean, again, I'm looking for confirmation who it's him. I'm, I believe it. But um, once, once you finally, once guys like Milo finally start getting thrown off all these platforms to spread their hate and make money off of it, uh, they get desperate. They're like, yes. I'm gonna start exposing all of my criminals with me too. Hey, you guys have said all these horrible things behind closed doors. I've got it on tape because that's what happens with bad people. They start cutting each other's throats and start saying, hey, you know, if I'm going down, you're going down too. It sounds like a gang of criminals that just got busted and they're holed up in their hideout and now they gotta start throwing people out the window. And more people have to point. start taking a stand against this. Like more organizations, more platforms have to start taking a stand against all of this, all of this behavior, because the problem is normalizing it and normalizing it by this argument that, like, oh, we have to hear them out. They represent a big part of the country. They represent the beginning of this country. We've yeah. been there. We got it. We understand. And if we start being honest about it, then we won't have to have Richard Spencer on a national network program yeah, right, speaking because right. he's not in a hood, he's in a suit. And it's a weird, funny looking suit too, but like it's <laughs> like, like I just wish that we would be not just as a whole, media in general would be more honest about who these people are and stop giving them platforms. Nobody needs to hear from this man. Yeah. I Nobody totally needs agree. to hear from Milo. Nobody needs to hear from any of these people. I will say though, I, I Milo uh, had a little bit of a meltdown because he's having a tough time paying no. his bills. Aw. <laughs> No. I mean, I remember the RNC. I remember him walking. You were there, Jr. Mm -hmm. He had like his sunglasses on inside. He had like a posse <coughs> with him, going in Radio Row, going from one news organization to another. Everyone was desperate to interview him and talk to him. I mean, and I remember thinking to myself, "Oh my God, this is the type of country that rewards bad people and bad <laughs> behavior." This is a big celebrity right now. So nothing made me happier than to see his demise because that's exactly what he deserved, right? Yeah. Um, he made a career out of harassing and yeah. terrorizing people of color on social media. That was how he got deplatformed on Twitter. That's exactly what he deserved. He's no victim. He made his bed. He gets to sleep in it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get. Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.